This practice today is a yin practice. We're going to put the five koshas to work. So uh, yin isn't really part of this teacher training curriculum. I really recommend that you take your own yin teacher training course. It's just an indispensable practice to learn about, but it's a little bit beyond the breadth of this course. But nevertheless, I wanted to incorporate the koshas with a yin practice because it's, um, it's a practice that I developed a couple of years ago, and I find it's a very straightforward to un way to understand the koshas, and you have time to incorporate them into your practice. The... Um, the sheaths, koshas are like sheaths that you peel back from your body, from your mind, your wisdom, um, and your spirit, and your breath. The second one is your breath. Um, and the, so if you separate from these layers, it can start to feel like a, a feeling of imbalance in your mind and in your spirit. Um, and maybe lead to poor health. So by paying attention to the five koshas, you um, are able to pay to, you're able to um, attain, you know, a balanced state of health because you're paying attention, first of all, to the physical sensations, next to awareness of the breath, awareness of your emotions, awareness of the attention of your mind, and finally, attention and awareness of your spirit. So this is a, a yin practice, and it'll be about 20 minutes, and we'll peel back each of the layers, each of the koshas, sheaths. I like to do yin without too many props. Um, it's the... It's a, it's a very intense practice, but the intention behind a yin practice is to lengthen and stretch the connective tissue in between your muscles and your joints. So you're seeking sensation, but you're dialing back the sensation from pain. So you come right to the edge of sensation, and then you dial it back slightly. For the first pose, we'll do fire log pose. Like with any practice, sit up tall first. And then as you settle into each pose, it's important to remember that yin is not an aesthetically based practice. It's just a, a strategy to seek sensation. So for me, my, my foot moves back slightly from, my, from on top of my knee, and I feel the sensation in my outer hips. Just lightly rest your hands in your lap. And then you can round forward slightly. Close your eyes. And then be aware of that physical sensation. The first kosha is awareness, anamaya kosha. It's just attention and awareness on physical sensation, but without judgment. So you're just noticing the tension in your hips. About a minute and a half here. Switch the cross of your legs. Attention and awareness on the physical sensation. So for this first layer, Anamaya Kosha, 
You're not, you're just using the sensation to hold your attention. No judgment on it, but try to um, hold on to that, that feeling, that awareness of your outer hips and use that to hold your attention on this practice, on this short chunk of your day that you're spending on your mat. Stay with the sensation, resist any urge to fidget or adjust. Stay here, let the weight of your body do the work of the yin practice, lengthening and stretching the connective tissue between your joints and your muscles. Let go of this shape. This windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Just a tiny bit of movement in between shapes. Come into a forward fold. Legs will extend out in front of you. Again, these yin shapes are not aesthetic just kind of, you just flop into them. It's, it's uh, less attention on posture and more attention on sensation. So for this forward fold, I think I just said wide-legged, but I meant legs together, forward fold. Just sit, let your feet flop out, wiggle your feet around a little bit, and then start to curl in and just fall forward. And the weight of your head will deepen the pose as you sit here for two minutes, a minute and a half to two minutes. So the second layer that we're peeling back, pranamaya kosha, is your awareness of your breath. And as you tuck into this forward fold, this introspective, safe shape, you tune your attention into your breath, and that's all. Not altering it or in any way, just listening to your inhales and your exhales.
If your attention is wandering a little bit, start timing your breath. So count in for one, two, pause, and exhale for one, two, pause. Carry on like that, just counting and timing your own breath. Heal yourself up and in. Attention is still on your breath. Use your inhale to lift yourself up. Sit up. Listen to two rounds of breath on your own time. Moving into a more intense yin pose, we'll start with baby dragon. Come onto your hands and knees. Low lunge. Excuse me, little dog. Somebody asked me recently why there was a dead dog in my yoga video. <laughs> He's not dead. He's just lazy. So baby dragon, right foot forward, left knee back. Just rest your weight on your hands. So the next kosha, Manamaya kosha, is your emotions, attention on your emotions. And it's handy to do this pose, uh, do Manamaya kosha when you're in a more intense yin pose. So the metaphor is that you resist the temptation to exit the pose. You resist the temptation to succumb to every single thought that flits across your mind. And you stay with the physical sensation, first layer, the breath sensation, pranamaya kosha, and then and manamaya kosha. So you stay with those three layers right now. You've peeled back the physical sensation, the breath sensation, and now you're peeling back the emotional sensation. And you use the first two tools, physical sensation, breath sensation, to control the third layer, which is attention on your emotions. You don't succumb to every single emotion that pops into your mind, just like you're staying put in your pose for a prescribed amount of time. Rock your weight back, and then disrupting yourself as little as possible, switch sides. So left foot comes forward, set yourself up in baby dragon. Hands are on the mat. If this isn't enough for dragon, you can have your hands interlaced on your top thigh. Peeling back that emotional layer you always have the power to react in one way or another to your circumstances. Sometimes you can't change your circumstances, but you can always change your reaction. And that's what the emotional layer represents. It's you peeling back that layer, controlling your reaction to your emotions, 
controlling your reaction to the sensation in this pose. If you're struggling a little, soften your jaw and your forehead. Remind yourself that everything is impermanent. Rock your weight back. Just set your feet up in the middle of the mat. A couple of breaths in dangling forward fold. Just hold your opposite elbow with opposite hand. A little bend in your knees. Just hang here for a couple of breaths. Maybe lightly sway from side to side. And then coming into a toe squat. So come up onto your toes. Feet together or slightly apart. So the full version of the pose, you'll sit up tall with your hands balancing on your knees. Sort of blurry focus just on whatever is right in front of you. We're going to stay for a minute. If this is too much, the options are to bring your hands and or your knees down to the mat and you're just pressing the weight into your toes. So you're stretching through the soles of your feet, stretching your toes and creating a pretty strong sensation to represent uh, Vijnamaya Kosha, which is the ability to observe the body and mind without judgment. You're creating this sensation using your breath, and the harnessing of your of control over your emotions to sit here and observe without judgment you can do it Stay with it. If you took on too big of a challenge, see if you can stay with it anyway without observation, without judgment, I mean. Stay with that tension and that pressure that's growing in your feet. Soften your face and your jaw. Take 10 more breaths. Bring your hands and knees back down to the mat. Just come on to all fours and maybe just kick your feet gently against the mat. <laughs> oh, sit yourself back. Just reflect on the four layers that we've come through so far. Physical sensation, breath sensation, emotional sensation, and finally sitting without judgment. We're going to come into my final, so the final yin pose will be my favorite, which is sleeping swan. We call it pigeon in um, a more a yang style class, but it's called sleeping swan in, in yin. And again, it's not aesthetically based. So whatever angle you need to bend your front knee so that there's no um, acute pain in your knee, 
And you could use a prop here for this one if you like. Um, I have this one handy, but again, I prefer, I really prefer just to practice without props, just me and, and my mat. And settle yourself down. Just prop up your chin on your hands or rest your, the, your forehead down and on the back of your hands. Final kosha, Anandamaya kosha, is just respect and acceptance of the true self without any judgment and the realization that bliss, joy, and peace are at our true nature. And I realize, so the very, even just saying that sentence and, and prescribing bliss, joy, and peace for yourself um, can cause anxiety because your, your mind runs away from you and you start to think about all of the non-blissful and non-joyful things that happen that are going, in your, going on in your mind. So just observe this, this idea from a distance. Bliss, joy, and peace are at your true nature. But if it's not immediately apparent, don't let that, those notions, don't let that expectation that that's at your true, at the heart of your true self, don't let that cause anxiety. Just observe it as, imagine that it's in a bubble and it's just, it's nearby, it's adjacent. But no need to be anxious if those three sentiments aren't always present. So as you settle into this sleeping swan for another minute, try just saying those words to yourself in your mind. Bliss, joy, and peace. And set yourself up for sleeping swan on the other side, disrupting yourself as little as possible. And before you settle in, say those three words gently to yourself, bliss, joy, peace. And then as you walk your hands forward, maybe with each pawing of the mat, bliss, joy, peace and you're settling yourself in getting closer and closer to those three minutes they're always adjacent but no need to fret if you don't embody them at every moment so it's these peeling back of these five layers that reveals this um our true center of bliss, joy, and peace. You can imagine it like a lotus flower. You're peeling back the petals, and at the center are these, these three qualities of the heart. But it's always a process. It's always observing your physical sensation, observing your breath, observing your emotions, observing your, um, your mind. And the more you practice this process of peeling back those layers, the closer you can get to, to feeling these qualities of bliss, joy, and peace.
come back up to sit. Grab your meditation seat. So we'll close this yin practice together. Well, not together. I will. We'll set ourselves up. Um, I'm going to sit, so right now set yourself a timer for five minutes or as soon as you close this video set a timer for five minutes and um, and then you don't have to worry about how long your meditation is going to last and you can let yourself sink deeply into it and then as you settle in <clears throat> your attention uh, is going to be on these three words bliss joy peace the the, the heart of the koshas the the culmination of peeling back all of the sheaths, all of the layers of the koshas. And let those three words be your mantra as you slip into meditation. So if you need, put on, put on a blanket or, or put on some socks. Let yourself drop down and into meditation. Set your timer for five minutes. Thank you so much for doing this practice with me, yogis, until we meet again.